Mark Rogers TV's College Football Predictions Week 3. Let's run it down and first let you know that uh, last week we went 2-1 and one in our confidence picks against the spread. So Michigan State with that last touchdown that Oregon scored really let us down. Ducks running out the clock on a 4th and 2 and, and the game was basically over. And of course they had to run for a touchdown and uh, Michigan State did not cover at minus plus 13.5. And our other two picks came through, though. Mizzou minus three and a half against Toledo and East Carolina plus the 16 against South Carolina. So two more confidence picks this week. Uh, again, we were 21 and three straight up. We were eight and seven against the spread. Two and one confidence picks. Listen up for the confidence picks against the spread. Let's start it off on Thursday night, a game that we previewed along with uh, Joe Lisi of GoForTheTwo.com. Thursday night matchup with the Cougars uh, looking for a statement game on national television. They have the national spotlight to themselves. They're a 17 and a half point favorite at home against Houston. The Cougars off to a bad start. Winners of one and two. They lost to Texas San Antonio by 20. I love the Cougars to cover the 17 and a half points at home in a spotlight game. BYU trying to get to three and zero oh. on Friday night. It's Baylor and Buffalo. If you remember the game after Buffalo gave the Buckeyes of Ohio State a bit of a scare in Week One last week or last year, they went to Baylor and got annihilated. Much of the same, although the game's at Buffalo, still early season, good weather. Baylor Bears, plenty of. Um, good weather to throw the football with Bryce Petty and company like Baylor to cover 34 and a half against Buffalo. Oregon, Wyoming, although we tell you each and every week to watch out for these games with the huge spreads. We don't like them at all. Oregon minus 43 against Wyoming. Alabama, Southern Miss. This is one that we will take the underdog in the points. It is 48 points. Yes, Alabama could win this game 55 to nothing, but if Southern Miss can put up any kind of points. We don't expect Alabama to go crazy and score 65. So Bama wins comfortably. Southern Miss plus the 48. Okay, let's get to some more serious games. This one's kind of intriguing. Oklahoma, Tennessee. The ball's not quite ready to go prime time. We don't believe uh, they've got some issues running the football, issues along the offensive line. Uh, we talked about this game as well earlier in the week and what Justin Worley needs to do against the Oklahoma Sooners with one of the top pass rushers in college football in Eric Stryker. Oklahoma, a 20-and-a-half-point favorite against Tennessee. We think they win comfortably, but take the Vols plus the 20-and-a-half points. Oklahoma wins straight up. Possibly the game of the week uh, in the country, certainly in the SEC. It typically um, gives um, an early season edge to the winner, Georgia-South Carolina in the SEC Eastern Division. Okay, South Carolina is still reeling somewhat off that opening day. Uh, loss at home against Texas A&M when they were ripped to shreds. They gave up some passing yards again last week against East Carolina, winning just by 10 points. But South Carolina back at home against Georgia. People are in love with Georgia off that one game against Clemson. Okay, Clemson's talented. They have some issues on offense. They are not bringing back the playmakers that established them as one of the top tier teams in the country the past few years. That's one game. People overreact to one game. Yes, I think Georgia is better than South Carolina, primarily because of South Carolina's issues in the secondary and along the defensive front. I think this Georgia football team, and I think the Georgia defense in particular, has a chance to be really, really good. I like Hudson Mason at quarterback to make enough plays because they're going to load the box. And, of course, the best player on the field is in a Georgia uniform in Todd Gurley. So take the dogs, but take Carolina. Not North Carolina, South Carolina, plus the 6.5 at home. So Georgia wins. Take the Gamecocks plus the 6.5 in a better game than most people expect. USC coming off the huge win against Stanford on the road. Travel all the way east to take on BC in what could be a trap game. We love USC, though, to cover the 17 points, although they struggled against a very good Stanford defense. Uh, and BC will slow down the game to try, to try to squeeze down the clock. So that will play against USC covering the spread. Still, Trojans so talented on defense, they could cause several turnovers in this game. USC minus 17. Texas A&M Rice, another difficult call as will be several games coming up here, 31 and a half, but take Texas A&M and Kenny Hill 
to cover after scoring 73 against Lamar and ripping up uh, South Carolina for 52 points as well. LSU and Louisiana Monroe take uh, the Bayou Bengals uh, minus 30 and a half points here to get it done. Notre Dame, Purdue, Purdue. Wow, that we, we mentioned this on Twitter a couple days ago that Purdue has probably fallen more than any program in college football. Texas more than any elite program in college football, but Purdue, considering what they were in the early 2000s, even after Drew Brees, it's just amazing to see Purdue is a horrible football team. They're a MAC level football team. Not even that. They lost by three touchdowns to Central Michigan. Take Notre Dame, even coming off the emotional last series win against Michigan and blowing out the Wolverines. Neutral site in Indianapolis. Take Notre Dame, minus the 28 against Purdue. Even if they come out sluggish, Notre Dame's not going to have any issues with Purdue in this game because Purdue is just bad. This is like a 52 10 game. All right. Ole Miss, Louisiana, Lafayette. Again, Rebels minus 26 and a half. Much better football team. We don't know how these teams are going to play in the fourth quarter, though. How the play calling is going to go and who's going to be trying. Keep that in mind. Okay, let's get to a confidence pick. UCLA underperforming first two weeks at Virginia, winning by eight and against Memphis, needing a late touchdown in defensive stand to hold off the Memphis Tigers, 42-35. Like UCLA to put it together. Jim Moore to get the troops together. Big time game. High profile game against the Texas team that, of course, is not living up to the Texas brand right now. So I like UCLA minus seven and a half. Think this is a low point spread. Could be falling into some fool's gold, but in a confidence pick, UCLA puts it together this week with Brett Hundley at quarterback and a superior defense against a Texas offense that will not be able to score many points in this game. Despite the Bruins' struggles on defense last week, UCLA minus 7.5. Stay in the Pac-12 with Arizona State and Colorado. This one a difficult one to call. Uh, Colorado getting 15.5 at home. We will take the buffs. Plus the points, Arizona State does win the football game uh, to set up some important games with USC and UCLA down the road. Stanford coming off the tough loss to USC in which they, in, in some respects, dominated the game out, gained the Trojans in a big way, take on Army. They're at home. They cover. Cardinal come back and cover against Army by 28 one of the more intriguing games of this Saturday that's suddenly become an important game for Virginia Tech in a national perspective. Of course, it does not count toward the ACC championship. So Virginia Tech, coming off the big win in Columbus, takes on East Carolina. The Pirates, in a rugged stretch, in taking on South Carolina, Virginia Tech, and North Carolina. Think of that. The Pirates of East Carolina taking on South Carolina, Virginia Tech, and North Carolina in consecutive weeks. Um, I like East Carolina with the 11 and a half points. Virginia Tech will not score a ton of points. Very impressed with Michael Brewer showing. They didn't run the ball against Ohio State. East Carolina will have difficulty keeping the Virginia Tech line off of Shane Carden, but of course Carden will make some plays. Like Virginia Tech, but they're going to be a little bit on a letdown after the big victory against Ohio State. Although I am concerned about the Pirates getting beat up against South Carolina physically, I like ECU plus the 11.5 against Virginia Tech. Mizzou in Central Florida, another lowly regarded, off the radar, under the radar kind of game that could be very entertaining and close. Mizzou came out against Toledo with 3.5 point favorite on the road and blew out the Rockets in the second half, 49-24. Uh, of course, Central Florida coming off the loss against Penn State. They've had two weeks to prepare for Mizzou and get quarterback Justin Holman ready for that Missouri defense. I thought about a confidence pick here, but we're going to keep it straight with Mizzou winning. Central Florida, though, covers 10.5 points in Columbia. Ohio State, Kent State. I'm taking Kent State in 32 points. Of course, the Buckeyes win comfortably. But until they score, and I know Kent State's not Virginia Tech. They're not even Navy I'll take Ohio State, but I'll take Kent State 32 points in that one. We'll find out if the Buckeyes can recover against some more quality teams in the Big Ten later. Louisville, Virginia. Thought about this one as a confidence pick, but Virginia should come out and play well at home. They have not found a quarterback. They will play two quarterbacks. They turn the ball over way too much. 
They gave up big yardage after playing so well against UCLA defensively. They gave up big yardage against Richmond. Louisville, of course, at home has looked tremendous. Blew out Murray State, took their starters out of the game in the second quarter, and before that, more importantly, in the ACC opener, really manhandled Miami up front. Uh, Gardner looked good throwing the football, making good decisions, and the defensive line was dominant. I thought about taking the Cardinals, laying the six and a half. I still do that. Not a confidence pick, but Louisville minus six and a half against Virginia. Two more games coming out of the West Coast. Nebraska, Fresno State. Fresno State losing 62-13 to USC. They lost in a big way to Utah as well. They will lose again to Nebraska. Yes, we know that Nebraska lost or almost lost. That would have been huh, devastating. Almost lost to McNeese State. Uh, save for Amir Abdullah. Nebraska is a 10.5 point favorite on the road. And if this was a typical Fresno State team, I would say take Fresno State in the points. Maybe they win the game. This is a really bad Fresno State team that's come out against uh, two Pac-12 teams and gotten blown out. Um, and Nebraska, despite the effort last week at home in week one, took on Florida Atlantic that played a little bit better against Alabama. And Nebraska put almost up almost put up 800 yards of offense. Bottom line, Nebraska minus 10 and a half against Fresno State. And finally, we finish up with another confidence pick. Washington has not performed well in two games. Hawaii on the road and at home against Eastern Washington, where the Huskies gave up 52 points. I cannot imagine Washington playing that poorly again in back-to-back -back weeks at home. They take on an Illinois team that is going to struggle this year against better opponents. They're 2-0. They've defeated Western Kentucky and Youngstown State. The odds makers have this as a 13.5 point game. And I know Washington gave up 52 points last week. And Wes Lunt's a capable quarterback. I just think Washington's too athletic, too gifted, has too many playmakers. I know they're trying to get things together on offense, but I think they kind of worked some things out with 59 points last week. Despite the opposition, they looked bad offensively against Hawaii. But I think at home, Chris Peterson, one of the better coaches in college football, really gets this team together. He knows that they need this game, not just to win it, to play really well, get themselves together, get ready for Pac-12 play, where they're going to start facing the Oregons and Stanfords very soon. Actually going to play Stanford very soon within this month at home in Seattle. So I like the Huskies, late 13 and a half. They've got far too much talent and speed for the Illini. All right, our picks, there they are. Again, the two confidence picks coming off two and one last week. UCLA minus seven and a half against Texas and Washington minus 13 and a half against Illinois. Would love to hear your picks. Throw them down there. You got the comments section. Let me know who you like this week. Week three of college football right here on Mark Rogers TV.